From a human health standpoint, we have continuous virus infections. We're all infected multiple times in a year, and some of these are really serious. And I do think that there's going to be new and more dangerous pathogens we continue to run into. From a scientific standpoint, they're fascinating because they bring so little with them and then they hijack us, our cells, to function. And so when you study them, you learn about an important infection process, but you also learn about how we function. And to me, that's a great synergy. I think it will. We do think about some of these mosquito-borne illnesses. When West Nile came in, we worried some about that. There's been worry in the southern part about dengue virus and actually a newer one to us called chikungunya virus. I think Zika will raise awareness partly because if the tie is really proven between microencephaly and Zika virus, that is obviously truly terrifying. For portions of the U.S., particularly far north, the mosquitoes that bear these don't really go there very often. But for the southern part of the U.S., it's a real risk and so I think the awareness is going to keep rising. You go back to the 1970s, uh, the Surgeon General of the U.S. thought we would conquer infectious diseases in his lifetime. And I think the AIDS epidemic and then these continuing new emerging diseases are proving that that's completely wrong. The reality is every virus does things a little bit differently. And so understanding the, the great molecular details on HIV infection doesn't necessarily tell us how, exactly how dengue works or now how Zika works. And so you really need to have scientists dissecting the details for every single one of these pathogens. And frankly, there's not that much money for much of this. If you looked at the Ebola crisis, that was one of the things that came up. If you really look at how much federal funding went into studying Ebola up until the crisis last year, it wasn't that much compared to how much money we put into other things. I'll become president at the next annual meeting, which will be in June. And the society has about 3,000 members. The annual meeting usually has about 1,600 people attending. First, it's an honor because it was an international election to be chosen. Um, and then my duties will include things like, basically, I get to plan the meeting in the terms of who the, all the major speakers are. That's exciting and a little daunting because you want it to be great. Looking at policy, and sometimes there are policy issues that come up that they want the president of ASV to weigh in on. So for instance, I went to meet with the president of the American Society for Microbiology recently. And one of the things we're talking about is how do we get colloquium up on emerging disease and how do we deal with the Zika virus issues. The first thing we started when we got here are working on viruses that are called Hendra and Nipah virus. And while most people won't have heard of Nipah, if you've seen the movie Contagion, Contagion was based on Nipah. So these are biosafety level four pathogens. They're what's called zoonotic, which means they will move from animal into human, and there is no treatment, and mortality rates are reasonably high. So we don't work with the whole virus, so Kentucky can rest easy, but we work with bits of it to start to understand how different viral proteins function, what do they interact with, so that you can come up with new therapies. And that work continues in the lab. And then about 10 years ago, we also started working on a different virus called human metanumovirus. It was discovered in 2001 from patient samples for people who had severe respiratory illness, but we didn't know what caused it. And once they knew what they were looking for, it turns out it's a worldwide pathogen. 99% of us get it by age five, and then we keep getting it. Probably the second or third cause of viral pneumonia in children and in the elderly. So if you look, for instance, at human metanumovirus, both a challenge and I think an excitement for that one is we're trying to move into models that look very much like the human respiratory tract because a lot of your work is done in a, a cell culture model that's just cells in a flat dish. And you can get a lot of information from that, but it doesn't look exactly like us. So we've been moving into models that actually reproduce small bits of the human respiratory tract. There, the biggest thing is that, they're, again, they're challenging to work with and they're extremely expensive. But if we don't do that, we always worry that what you've done in a simple model may not really look like it would be when you and I are infected. A few years into my lab opening back in 2004, one of my students discovered a, a, a very novel process for activating a protein in Hendra and Nipah virus and which, exactly which cell enzyme was involved and it was completely new. And that's really exciting because you suddenly think, we learned something that no one else knew. In fact, there's several groups, medicinal chemistry groups, who are using that still to develop antiviral inhibitors. And we've had continuing aha moments like that. You don't have them every week or every month, but they do come. And that's one of the real excitements. The other thing to me is actually the people you work with, because science means you're continually working with trainees of the postdoc, graduate, and undergraduate level. And sometimes for them, watching 
their experience, their growth is to me also an aha moment. Because you can take someone who really wasn't a scientist and was kind of shy and suddenly you realize over the last three or four years they've matured into somebody who's going to change the world. So I'm very fortunate. I'm now training my 17th PhD student. I've worked with lots of undergrads. I love them. They're doing science because they love it. And to me, that's really, really wonderful. You know, when I first came to Lexington to interview, I knew nothing about this university. And now 15 years later, it's not that I haven't been approached, I have, but I'm so happy here. I would not want to leave because I love all those bits about it.